Hi everyone, welcome back to Plum Ashable. So today we're going to be using the Planners Anonymous Babe It's Christmas digital kit to make five really easy Christmas cards. So if you want to see how I made them, then just keep watching. Okay, so I have gone ahead and printed out a bunch of stuff from the Babe It's Christmas uh, digital kit. I haven't printed out everything, but I have printed out a lot. Some of it I've used a little bit of already but most of it's cut out um, and ready to go. Now this is using the digital kit, like I said, and I have used my Cricut to cut these out. Some of them are better than others. This one, the bleed has got a bit much around the side, so I'll trim that off as we go. Some of the other ones, like this one, which is a lot simpler, obviously, has worked out perfectly. We're gonna make five different cards here. These are all reasonably quick once you've got everything cut out. Cutting it out, sizing everything up, honestly takes the longest. If you have a Cricut or a Silhouette, that's obviously a lot easier, especially for these intricate cuts, like this one with the cute little um, leaves and things. If you haven't got a Silhouette or a Cricut and you just want to use your um, scissors to do it, these some of most of these shapes are really easy to cut out. In fact, sometimes I think they'd be easier to cut out by hand than with the Cricut. But anyway, that's the way we've done it and we're going to give it a shot. So we're going to do five different cards. I have them all ready here. I'm going to do two craft cards and one uh, and three white cards. The white ones are generally going to have a background put on them. So they're going to be easy enough to do. So I'm just going to put all my little bits and pieces at the top here. So the first one we're going to cut out is this gorgeous one here with the with the bows and the gingham. And I just, I just love this. And I want to use a stitch re rectangle die. Most of these I'm going to cut without dies or anything else like this but I just think the, the stitching detail on here is just going to make this look so stunning. So I'm just trying to find the spot I want to put the rectangle. And the best thing is because this paper is seriously, I can print out as many as I like, it doesn't really matter sort of where I put this, as in doesn't matter if I waste some of this paper, it's fine, so that's all good. So I'm gonna put it there and make it as straight as I can. Grab in my die cutter. And the reason I'm grabbing it now is because it's got all this tape on top so I can use the tape to stick everything down or hold things down. So I'm just gonna make sure that's straight. And I'm actually using the lines on the paper to help me out with this. Because then I'm gonna cut this bit here so that I get enough to go through my die cutter. And obviously I'll keep that paper so I can use it again. Get the little sandwich going. This is, I love these dies because of this. It leaves this absolutely amazing stitching detail all around the outside that I just think looks so good. Especially on something like gingham. And then obviously we'll, um, I've got stickers everywhere. Uh, I'll trim this down once we've got it stuck down to actually kind of fit it. I'm going to go ahead and glue this down first because I don't want this, I don't need this to have anything else done to it. Doesn't matter if you go top or bottom. And if you want it to be a little bit thinner, which I'm sort of thinking before I do this, just grabbing my um, scoring tool and just giving this a really good fold so it gets a really crisp fold there. So I'm going to trim the card afterwards. So that I've got the right kind of width the whole way around. So actually I'll do that now. Just grabbing the trimmer. I'm just gonna clean off that ink before I keep going. Whoops. So I'm just gonna do this with the trimmer. And if I leave it closed, it'll cut it through both edges or both bits. And that one I was just too impatient. I thought I'd push straight through, but I haven't. There we go. So we've got the little card there. I'm going to grab the present, and I'm also making sure I've got my. It wasn't that one. It was the Merry and Bright, that one. Now I'm just going to fix up this bleed on this one because I just. It's just too close and too dark for me, so I'm just going to try and get off some of the dark at the bottom here. The ones at the top's okay. 
so and I want the merry and bright to sit behind and I want the um, want the flower to sit up now I'm just trying to work out what I'm going to do with this little sprig as cute as it is I'm gonna get rid of it only because it's not really doing a good job of staying there I'll keep this one over here and also then I can get a little bit closer and trim off some of this excess so it'll sit like that the merry and bright is going to be flat but I'm going to put the present up on some foam tape just to give it a little bit of dimension just glue that all up tape going. Oops, can't pick anything up at the moment. My fingernails are horrible. So I'm just using normal kind of foam tape, nothing fancy here. And I just want a, a nice solid kind of backing. I don't really mind if it's not all the right size or anything. I just want it to feel really solid. making sure I can't see any of that through this side which I can't and then on the top here I do need to put something here now I currently I do usually have thin foam tape it's been packed and I ran out and I didn't think I would so I'm just going to manipulate some thick wash thick foam tape to be small enough to use so I'm using it in little oops, mini squares sometimes that's easier than having like a, a row of it Certainly much easier to manipulate in these really small areas. Placing that on there. All right, so now I'm gonna take off all of the backing tape. Oops. bit just doesn't want to go so I'm just gonna to have to go without it so we'll just place this down I'm just gonna have it slightly off center just so that it doesn't go over the bright and it's not too bad I'm gonna grab this little bit still so I've taken off the second bit of release paper so there's no paper on there at all A little bit wide still. Now I know that's hard to believe considering how small it is, but it's just a little bit much. Now nobody's going to be looking at your card this closely, I can promise you that, but if you are worried about it, and you are a little bit of a perfectionist like I am, and taking the extra couple of seconds to do that's not too bad. So there we go, there's the first one. I love that, it's so good. And I'm just leaving the insides blank. I'm not gonna do anything with them at the moment. And again, it's a small detail, but that stitching does just add something to it that I think is really cool. So the second one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this gorgeous piece of paper with just this Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. That's all it's gonna be. It's really nothing more than that. I'm gonna stick that down. I'm gonna go white cardstock for this one. So because I'm gonna put this down on onto the card base, I kinda need to measure out sort of where I want it so I sort of want to go there because I want that to sit right in the middle of everything else so if I put it there and then just grabbing a pencil and again because I've got tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of this paper in that I can reprint it whenever I like I can be a little bit wasteful when I'm using these because I don't feel any paper guilt Gonna line that up now if you wanted to be really pedantic you could um, mark that or sorry you could pull the whole line down because I'm not really all that worried and if I need to I'll just make my card a little bit thinner we'll do it that way so I'm not getting rid of the trimmer because I'm sure I'm gonna need it again oh look at that perfection so I'm just gonna make sure that sits in the right spot 
there is a little bit of overhang on this side so I'll fix it up in a sec mark those ones and cut them too. Now none of these are particularly difficult techniques, they're not complicated, they're reasonably simple, it's just cutting and putting it all together. The hardest part honestly is getting all of the uh, bits of paper and everything printed out, but once you've got it, it's actually pretty simple. So if I see any Pencil marks, I'm just going to rub them out. There is a tiny one there, but I don't, uh, I'll just do it because I can. So I'm just going to cover this one all up with tape as well. And I think that the beauty of these kind of digital kits is that you don't need to do too much with them. If you don't have a lot of time to sit around and make a bunch of Christmas cards, this is how simple they can be. It's, it's really that easy. And I don't even, oh yeah, and I'll trim that a little bit. I was going to say, I don't even need to trim this, but I will just a little. I'm just doing it with scissors just because I have a straight line that I can follow, which makes it a bit easier. Okay. And I'm just going to stick this up on some foam tape, same way we did the other one, because I think it just looks beautiful. Really good for, a, this one's obviously for a planner girl, not so much for a, um... <laughs> Not so much for someone that doesn't plan this one, but anyone that does is going to appreciate the heck out of this. So if you've got some planner friends or some crafty friends, fins, friends, I can get words out, I can. Uh, this would be absolutely perfect for them. Let's get rid of that release tape again. Now this is the downside to super sticky foam tape, is that sometimes the release paper gets stuck. And your fingers get stuck. But so we've got the plan yourself a merry little Christmas. It's just going to sit there in the middle. Easy as. Oh, I love that so much. You could do all these digitally if you didn't want to have it sit up or if you didn't want the, I guess the, what's the word I'm looking for? If you didn't want the, the dimension of it and you just wanted them to sit flat, you can do all of these in Word, Photoshop. Makes it really, really easy. So this next one, I'm going to grab that um, little bit of, I'm going to grab my die back in. Sorry, I'm having real trouble with my words. And I've actually used this to cut something that I'm going to use up in next week's video. Next week's video? The week of Christmas. So what I'm going to do is have this sit, I want to have, I'm going to cut the two bits and I don't really care how high they am and then I'll just trim them off afterwards. So I just want to have two halves that have the stitching. And I know I said that that first one was going to be the only one I did but it just ended up looking so good I just can't help it. Just really quickly run this through. Ow! Gets me every time. So I'm deliberately making sure They are the same size, and then I'll just cut off the excess or line them up or one or the other. So, this one I'm going to have on there. So, the good thing about having two bits is I can actually make it higher so that it will sit on the card. Obviously, I'll just trim off that bit of white. I'll cut off the white because it's easier than cutting off the green. Oh, actually, it's probably just as easy as each other. Whoops. Okay. So, we'll get our little card ready to go. So, we're going to have yellow on the top. And green on the bottom and we'll stick the green down first because the green's got this little bit here now it's it's personal preference I'm just gonna just cut that weird shape off um, there's also just a little bit of fuzzy bits at the bottom where it hasn't quite cut perfectly so I just like to just run the run the scissors along them just to make sure that all the fuzzy bits are gone so I'll put the green down first Have 
that sitting sitting there. I'm also just going to grab my scoring tool again and just do that. And then we'll get the yellow and we'll just line it up. And I think I'll bring in some washi just to cover this liner. It's not bad. And honestly, when you put the other bits on it, you probably won't even notice. But I do want to just make sure it's as perfect as possible. So I'm just lining that up there, making sure it's straight. There we go. Now my happy holidays is a bit bigger than I remember it. Probably could have just done that the whole way. I feel like that needs the stitching on it now though. What do you reckon? If I put it there I could just do just the top stitching. I did want this one to be flat just because all the other ones have been not flat. No, I reckon I'll just put it there in the middle and then put the deer because it just sits in the right spot. But I am going to cover that washi up, that line up. I'm just going to add this little bit of, this is actually the Planner Babe, or well Babe It's Christmas, sorry, um, washi tape. And I'm just going to line that up right over the line. It's just going to add a tinsy little bit. And no, I haven't forgotten. I'm just going to use my craft knife. cut through the washi because it is raised up so it makes it really easy to do that okay and I haven't done any damage at all to the card I'll just stick these two down one side of the the wire there that little bit of gold adds so much and you wouldn't think it would but it just does oh so pretty so that's three. <laughs> all right, now we're up to number four. This one's the simplest one of all because I've already done the little die cut that I want. So that's all that it's gonna be. But what I am gonna do is add in some stamping. So I've actually gone ahead and got my Planner Babe kit out. So I'm gonna use the little bow that comes in this. So let's grab that out. She's sitting up the top here. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my Worn Lipstick Distress Oxide and I'm just going to stamp out, I'm just trying to decide which way I want the card to go or if I want it to be square. No, it's going to go that way. I'm just going to stamp the bow out and it's not going to be too busy. I don't want it to be all over the place. And I picked a pink because I think the pink picks up the colour of the peonies really nicely. So it's just going to be sort of just alternating the sides or the What's the word? The orientation, I guess, of the bow. I'm just going to continue that down the page. Don't mind if I go off. That keeps the pattern going. Also not worrying too much if my impression isn't perfect because at some point or another it's going to get covered up anyway, so it won't matter. I'm really not liking that. I think it looks too plain. All right, instead of doing that, Instead of doing that, I'm going to grab, I still want to do the same thing, but it just, it needs to be not, it needs to be not white. So, I'm just going to grab this piece of scrap paper, I'm just going to cut it to the same size as the card front. I'll just get a new card base, that's probably easier. And let's face it, I've got like 50 million of them, so you might as well. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm just going to grab my blending tool, which is a little bit red at the moment, but just rub that off onto some paper towel. And I'm just going to ink blend all over this background, just very lightly with the worn lipstick, which is just this really pretty pink, like you were saying. tone on tone with the, the bows. We'll just see how we go. Oh, I just want to put some water on this before we keep going. I just want to spritz it off 
or spritz it, sorry, just to get a little bit of texture on it. Okay, so try again with those bows. I think I'll just do it a little bit more random, so less of them, but sort of more sporadic. Some of them will be hidden behind the uh, behind the tag anyway, so you don't have to go too over the top, but the tone on tone looks really cool. Alright, and then we'll put the tag on there as well. And I'm just going to have it in the middle. It's just going to sit flat. Now I would normally put some string or ribbon or something else around the tag because I've already packed it I'm not going to but a little bit of pink ribbon or pink string would look really cool and give this a little bit more of a something different kind of look but how nice is that oh actually I'm really proud of that one all right so that's the second to last one this is the last one this is the absolute last one and this one's going to have a little bit of something different. So it's going to go on the craft card stock and I'm going to cut it to just smaller than my card. So I've got just a tinsy little border, but I'm not going to do the stitching because we've obviously done that enough times. So we've got 14.6 by 10.4. Fourteen I want this one to sit this way. 14.6 needs to be how wide it is. So I'm just gonna cut that off so I've got an edge. 14.6, so make, let's make it this is on the fly card sizing. Not a good idea. Um, 14.6, so I'll make it 13.6. We make it 13.6 because then it's got the half a centimetre the whole way around. That's 14, 13.6. That's 10.4, so that makes it 9.4. This isn't perfect, that's okay. It's just to be around the right size. Yeah, that's perfect. So it's going to stick on there like that and stitching around the outside would look really cool but for the sake of the fact we've already done it three times I'm not going to worry about it actually I just had a thought so I'm going to do two things here the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to grab this sentiment and it says tis the season to be planning but I want it to have a bit of a black backing I'm going to do the same thing around this because it'll really bring the two together so I'm just going to stick that down and I'm just leaving a very skinny black matting all around the outside of that. And then we'll trim that off. I'm not gonna measure this bit at all. I'm just gonna use my, use my sight. I can always trim it a bit more if I need to. So always, if you are gonna do it by sight, always leave a little bit too much. And then you can always take just a little bit more off if you feel like it needs it. But you obviously can't add more on, so always Overestimate, don't underestimate. Fingers off the way. Oh, that looks so good. And I'm going to stick down the tis the season to be planning. This one I'm actually going to cut out by hand, and it's only because I don't, A, don't really want to go back to the Cricut and make it do it again. Uh, but two, it's such a simple shape, you really don't need to cut the second one out by hand, um, out by with the machine. So if I put that right down, on the edge, it means I'm only going to cut one inch, which that helps. And then I can just cut the flags. And I'm trying to decide if I want to do this with the trimmer, if I want to do it by hand. I think I want to do it with the trimmer. So I'm lining that up. This tape is too good to use for this, but because it's handy and all. I'm just going to line that up and I'm just making sure it's straight. It only needs to be a thin bit anyway just cut the flag bits so 
So I've got the, the black matting and then you've got the black matting with the Tis the Season. We're going to stick that up. No, we're going to have that flat. And then I've got this little planner girl who's going to sit over the top. And the fact that she doesn't sort of ad adhere to the size, I think is even better because it really does help build this all together. So just really quickly going to stick it all down. Now the girl might look cool on foam tape. Yeah, I wasn't going to, but I will. It's going to be another tricky one because it is a little bit intricate especially down the legs and stuff but it's not too bad good thing is I still have some of that foam tape left from the last one we did so we can use that now all of this has been printed on the same kind of paper like all of the planners anonymous stuff it's all on Canson drawing paper. It's 110 GSM, so it's got a fair amount of weight behind it, but it is, a, it, it is still paper. It's not cardboard. So if you do want it with just a little bit more strength, I'd really highly recommend just doing it on some white cardboard. The reason I use the Canson paper is that I really love... Oh, I hate that phone um, I really love the way the finish is. It kind of gives it this matte... You guys know how much I love matte. Uh, matte kind of finish to it that just I don't get from normal cardboard. So it's why I like to use it and I can deal with the fact that it's not as strong as I'd like it to be. I'm having some issues. Um, it's the same thing I cut my um, inserts out of and I just, I just love it. It's just the best. So I'm having some issues with this phone tape, but that's all right. This is why we use tweezers because we can fix it. Just hold that down. Whoop. I am trying some new foam tape that I got at Picture Page. So I'm not worried if this lot doesn't work as good as the other lot. It could just be that it's just a little bit more sticky and I just have to get used to it. But it's just a just something different. Come on, don't come off again. There we go. So we'll just flip her over. We'll just have her sitting in front of the little banner. She's got a good amount of foam behind her, so she feels really strong there, which is really good. And I just love that. It's so, it's it's actually really simple, but it's really, really pretty. Oh, love. So there we go. Five cards using the Gorgeous Planners Anonymous digital kit for Babe It's Christmas. If you are a Christmas lover, this is a must-have. It's got different kinds of Christmas colours, which is so nice to see. We're so used to the greens and the reds and the golds that when you do add in just some pink and some yellow and some green it's so different and even even the pink girl in me is is cheering just a little bit because this is actually really nice so please let me know which one of these is your favorite leave it down below or you can find me on any of my socials don't forget to follow me there and to subscribe here on my channel so you don't miss any future videos i hope you have an absolutely fantastic fantastic rest of your day and i will see you again in my next video sending lots of huggles bye